guy. He does pee on everything. We just rode the funicular up uh, to the top of the city here to the monument uh, honoring someone whose nickname was El Pipila. El Pipila, whose actual name was Juan Jose de los Reyes Martinez Amaro, was a miner uh, back in the early 1800s and during the Mexican War of Independence in 1810 he became a hero uh, when he single-handedly strapped uh, a large flat stone to his back and approached a granary where uh, Spaniards had uh, taken refuge from, uh, from the locals and he was able to set the door on fire which then enabled the local militias to effectively go in and kill the Spaniards securing the freedom of the city. So there's a large statue here up on the hill uh, that's a bit of a, a tourist spot that you can visit. So we also read that he may or may not have been um, the sole hero, but as is often the case with kind of the legends that emerge out of history, it's, it's a more compelling story to have the, the single intrepid hero it who may, carried concrete on his back to shield himself from muskets. It may have been a slightly exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> the statue actually depicts him holding the flat stone or concrete yeah. or whatever and, it was. Uh, and, and a, a torch uh, held high above his head that he used to set the uh, door to the granary on fire. So we took the funicular up one way, which was 35 pesos, and you can actually take it back down if you want to pay double that, or you can actually walk back down uh, to the old city. So the views from up here are absolutely spectacular. You really get a sense of how this city is built in a bowl surrounded by mountains, and the colors of the building just make, make the views uh, incredibly beautiful. just taking a break from walking. I think over the last four days, we've probably walked 50 kilometers or so. Yeah. Uh, and Guanajuato especially, very walkable city. It's a cool place. It's just an endless maze of streets and alleys and stairwells it's, mm -hmm. and tunnels, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and everywhere you turn, there's a shop or a little hole in the wall, literally a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm restaurant, cafe. Vendor, lots of street vendors. Just yeah. Right there. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> we encountered someone selling crickets. Roasted? Were they roasted? They were roasted and salted. So I've kind of given yeah. it away. Winona tried the uh, the crickets. I did. You had two? I had two. Yeah. Yeah. They were I, actually really good. Um, I thought they were tasty. I was, I don't know, I had eaten them when I was a kid, <laughs> like grasshopper. Accidentally? No. Were they roasted? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was a kid. So uh, this was a much better experience, I can say. So I know everybody's wondering who's watching this, did, did they taste like chicken? No, they did not. They tasted like potato chips. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know and I, I won't know. <laughs> Of course, there's ice cream everywhere, and uh, we were out at the granary, which relates to uh, a historical event here. I was flying the drone, and I, for the first time, I lost contact with the drone while it was out of sight, which you're not supposed to do, but I did it. <laughs> Everything's uh, concrete here, so there's a large concrete mass between me and the drone, and it, it caused me some anxiety. 
then I started getting warnings that my altitude was too high and that I may you were be in airspace. <laughs> that I may be in violation of local regulations. Uh, but it all ended well. I was able to switch positions and regain control of the drone and I think it would have eventually come back to me. I think that's how they're designed. I haven't had to experience that yet. I also want to say about uh, Guanajuato and some of the other cities I've been to in the last uh, week or so that are within, you know, a couple of hours of Mexico City. They are absolutely worth coming to. Um, I think what, what a person could consider doing is flying into Mexico City and then using the the bus and I mean these are first class buses we were sitting actually up on the second level right at the front they're the seats were the equivalent of what you'd find in a business class flight yeah and uh, speed bumps were really fun yeah <laughs> that'd be in any vehicle but it's a great way to get around the country and uh, you know it was a four or five hour bus ride and our tickets in this first class bus were fifty dollars each uh, so not nothing crazy completely doable and it's just a different way of seeing Mexico and a way of seeing a different Mexico than just the beaches and the resorts. Yeah. The thing Guanajuato is probably the most famous for are these tunnels. So although these tunnels are now used by cars and trucks, that wasn't the original intent. Back in the early 19th century, Guanajuato was a thriving silver mining town. In fact, at one point in its history, it accounted for two-thirds of the world's production of silver. But they had a problem with flooding. Every August during the rainy season, the Guanajuato River would flood the city. So they used their mining expertise and built a large tunnel to divert the river underneath the city. Now fast forward to the 1960s when technology had evolved, they were able to build a deeper and better tunnel along with some damming to permanently uh, deal with the flooding situation. So these old tunnels were gradually transformed into vehicular tunnels that we have here today. There's a whole network of them uh, it's almost like going down a, a rabbit warren. There are intersections underground, there are parking lots, and various other services. And you can actually walk the tunnels, it's perfectly safe, although it's a little bit uh, smoky or there's a little bit of exhaust in the air from the vehicles. But it is something that you shouldn't miss if you're in Guanajuato. There's also a network of staircases throughout the tunnels that lead you back up to the old city. Just really cool, something you gotta see.